Hey everyone, uh, my name is Calvin and welcome to my video tutorial and uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to paint this sort of uh, island forest scene and uh, it's pretty uh, heavily influenced from another artist named Iraville and uh, I'll put links to uh, her website uh, in the description and you can check out some of her work and maybe get inspired as well. Uh, I'm going to use the storybook watercolor paper texture. Uh, but uh, you can use any texture. I just think this one is really suitable because it has this kind of very simple, very finely grained kind of texture. And uh, the brushes I'm going to use are just the normal watercolor brushes from the normal watercolor kit. So I think the first thing I'll do is make a quick sketch. And uh, usually I use the pencil to do the sketch, but I know that's hard to see on these videos. So I'm going to use the uh, fine liner pen. Uh, hopefully that'll be a little easier to see. So I'll make my sketch very light, just so I can barely see it. And uh, I'm just going to start by doing the trees. So I'll make a new layer. I'm going to make sure I'm on a different layer uh, than the pencil sketching. I'm going to work underneath it. And uh, since this scene's going to be kind of an autumn scene, I'm going to choose a pretty warm color for the trees. And uh, I'll just fill those in with the uh, soft Neptune quill brush. So I'm happy with that. I'm just going to grab the water blender brush and just sort of get rid of some of those uh, hard edges that just don't look quite right. But I'll, I'll make sure I leave some of them behind because I do like the look. And after I've got it blended, uh, I'm going to use the eraser tool and just try to clean up some of the edges because I did go way out of my sketch lines. There we go. I think that's uh, cleaned up pretty well. Now I'm going to sort of separate these trees on the side using the selection tool and then change the color that way. You don't have to do it this way, but I really like this kind of uh, little trick here. So I'll grab the selection tool and make it set to freehand. And I'll just sort of follow the outline of one of these trees, just like that. Uh, I'll go to my uh, hue, saturation, and brightness adjustment. Uh, and then I can maybe s sort of offset the color a little bit. And I'll just play with it until I find a nice uh, sort of autumn color. I think that's pretty good. And I'll do the same thing for the other one. And uh, hue, saturation, and brightness. But this time I'll do it kind of green, I think. There we go. That's pretty good. Uh, there's one more trick I'm going to do with the trees. I think I'll turn off the sketch just so I can uh, show you this a little easier. Uh, so this tree in the background, it's behind, and I want to add a shadow there. So I'll grab my selection tool, and I'll just select uh, sort of just away from this, these trees on the side just a little bit. And then I'll feather that one out. And then I'll go to my uh, hue, saturation, and brightness. And I'll just brighten the middle. And that leaves the dark uh, edges kind of, I leave them dark. Then maybe I'll shift the hue a little bit. And uh, I'll make a, another selection here. Just getting the inside of these trees, and I'll click the plus to do another one, and then the plus again to do this last tree. And then I can feather all three of those at once. So I'll feather all of those out, and then go back to my hue, saturation, and brightness. And I'm just going to shift the hue of the center of all of these. So let's try that. Okay, I think that's pretty good. And lower the saturation. I think that's pretty cool. It just gives this kind of dynamic uh, color look there that I like. So I'll zoom out here and turn on my sketch again. Okay, now I'm going to do the island next. So I'll make another layer. And I'm going to do that with a uh, kind of a sort of desaturated soft green color. And I'll use the same brush as before, the uh, soft Neptune quill. Okay, that's pretty good. I think I'll just clean up the edges with the uh, eraser here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, I want to add a kind of a color ombre effect. So I'll select the little island like that, and then I'll feather it out. And then I'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness. And do a similar thing that I did to the trees. I'll just sort of lighten it, and then maybe shift it towards yellow just a little bit. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's see. Okay, and then I'll deselect that. Now I want to grab that selection tool again here, and I want to add a kind of an edge to this island. So notice how I'm kind of foreshortening it on these curves, but then I open it back up again like that. Uh, just so I've selected the very edge of the island, kind of imagining if it's like a three-dimensional thing. Uh, and then I'll lower the brightness, lower the saturation, and maybe shift the hue to a kind of a brownish color. 
Actually, I think that is a little bit too dark. Let's try, yeah, that's pretty good. Now deselect that. Now I'm gonna do the dark forest detail back here. So I'll make uh, yet another layer and then uh, grab the selection tool. It's still set to freehand. And I'll just try to freehand the difference, uh, the, uh, the boundary here where, between the trees and the island. And uh, it's okay if it's not perfect. Just like that. And it's totally okay if it's not perfect. And uh, since I'm on a uh, totally blank layer here, uh, I'll use the same brush, Soft Neptune Quill, but I'll select a pretty dark color. And if I uh, set this brush pretty big and I press hard, it'll be kind of gray. And I'm pressing hard and soft to get this kind of natural, it's kind of like a streaky effect, I guess. It's because if you press this brush softer, it does lighten up a little bit. And uh, if you notice in a few areas, uh, you missed it and you have these white spaces. I, I personally think that looks uh, pretty cool, but if you want, you can deselect it, just zoom in and then use the uh, water blender brush and just sort of push those edges in just so they meet it a little bit closer. And it's okay to go over the edge just a little bit into the trees because since we're on a totally separate layer, we can use that eraser brush and just go in there and clean it up. And, and this will make it look a little bit more perfect, but don't get carried away. It's Personally, I think a lot of the imperfections with watercolor is what makes it so cool in the first place. So I'm happy with that. Um, I want to add some detail in the shadows. And there's a few ways you could do that, but I'm, I'm really loving the selection tool uh, for this kind of artwork. So I'll grab it again. And as long as it's on freehand, I can just sort of outline some imaginary trees kind of out there in the distance. There, you can see I just drew some sort of outlines of tree trunks like that. And I'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness and just raise the brightness and they just sort of come out of the darkness there. So we'll deselect that. And uh, next I'm gonna do the tree trunks. And I think I'll hide the sketch for now. I'm gonna do the tree trunks on a totally separate layer. And I'll do the brown ones first. The middle one's gonna be white, but these will be brown. So I'll select sort of a light brown color over here. And same brush, the soft Neptune quill. It's really ideal for this kind of artwork because it has a lot of layering power. So medium size, and we'll do this one real quick. And don't worry about the bottom. Uh, we'll use the eraser and cut that off later. Just add a lot of little branch details uh, over here. You don't have to go crazy with it, but it does look cool if you uh, add these little splits at the end. And uh, do the same thing to this one over here, but I think I'll shift the uh, color just a little bit more towards yellow, just to make it a little more interesting. And I'll do a different pattern on uh, this tree. I'll just use the eraser real quick and square off the bottom of these tree trunks, just like that. And uh, I think we can do my favorite part here is the, um, it's the white tree trunk. So I'm still gonna do this, I guess I'm gonna do this on the same layer as I did the brown ones. I'm just gonna grab a pure white color, same brush, maybe same size, uh, and I'll just do the white tree trunk. This is gonna be like a birch tree. And uh, I do have some sort of transparency going on here, so I'll do another layer of it. Okay, that's pretty good. I'll square the bottom of this one off. So I think this tree is kind of in the distance, so I'll just match the curve of the little island here. There we go. And um, I wanna make, add these sort of horizontal lines to it so it looks sort of like a birch tree. So I'm gonna grab the selection tool, but I'll use the automatic one this time. And uh, if I click on the white and then start dragging, uh, you'll notice it turns black right away. Uh, if I drag too much, kind of everything will uh, get selected. Yeah, there we go. Everything will kind of turn blue. That means you've gone too far. Uh, you need to back it off a little bit until it um, uh, stays black. So I'll do that one more time. Just grab the selection tool on automatic and just click and drag until only the white tree trunk turns black. Then I'll go to my brush again and I'm going to select a very, very, very light gray, I guess, and small size. And what's, what's happened here is if I, um, when I made that selection, it sort of masked off this trunk. So when I draw, I don't have to make sure I end exactly at the edge. It'll just automatically sort of cut it off when it goes over. And uh, I'll just quickly go over this and add some of these uh, horizontal lines. Uh, after, after I do this first layer of them, 
uh, I'm gonna grab maybe a slightly darker version of that color and do a few dark ones, just a couple dark ones, and then I'll grab a really light version and just add a few more like that. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. So I'll deselect it and then uh, we'll zoom out here. I wanna turn my sketch back on. So there we go, that one. And I still gotta do my rocks and my cattails. So I'm gonna add another layer on top of this and maybe I'll choose sort of medium gray color for the stones. Same brush, the soft Neptune quill, probably the same size as well. And uh, I'll just do these rocks real quick. And uh, if you have too much uh, sort of transparency going on where you can see what's going on through the rock, just give it a few more brush strokes and it'll kind of cover it up. I'll just clean up the bottom of them with the eraser brush just so they're kind of uh, a little bit more flatter. Okay, I think I'll turn off my sketch uh, and show you how to do the shadows on these rocks. So what I'll do is I'll make sure I have the rock layer selected and I'll grab that selection tool and set it back to freehand. And I'm just gonna select maybe the bottom of the rock and then part of the right side, just like that. Uh, and then when I go to hue, saturation, and brightness, and I lower the brightness, you can see it gives it that kind of shadow effect. So I'll just go ahead and do that to all of these rocks. I'll zoom out here. I think that looks pretty good. Just gonna add some cattails and some grass now. So I'll make uh, one more layer on top and I'll try maybe a kind of a light green color and we'll see how that looks. I think this time I'll use the smooth pen and we'll see how that looks. Let's try a little bit of a lighter one. Okay, that looks pretty good. So maybe a bit smaller and I'll just quickly add some grass kind of coming out around these rocks and I'll choose a little bit of a darker version of the same color, just to add some more detail in there, and then maybe a really dark one. I'll grab the eraser and just sort of um, flatten out the bottom of those grass. Now I'll do the uh, cattails. I think I can do them on the same layer. Now cattails, maybe the stem is kind of yellowish green, but the, the very tip of them is kind of brown. Let's see what that looks like. And I think I'll use the fine liner pen this time. So there's my cattails. I think those look okay. Just over here, I lose some contrast. So what I'll do is I'll use my selection tool on freehand and just sort of make a selection covering that area with the low contrast. Uh, I'll feather that out. I'll go over here to my hue, saturation, and brightness, and I'll just try to get back some of that um, contrast there. There we go, that sort of jumps off a little bit better. Okay, and I'll grab a brown color to do the uh, ends of the cattails. Uh, I think I'll move these cattails over a little bit closer, so I'll just select them like that. Uh, grab my uh, move tool and just sort of nudge those a little bit. Thing like that, maybe we'll straighten them up. There we go. Uh, I wanna add some more detail to the sort of uh, black forest. So what I'll do is I'll go and find that layer it's this one here, layer eight. And uh, as long as that layer is selected, I can go to the uh, selection tool again and set it to freehand. And then I can just sort of outline some interesting details kind of out here in the forest, just like that. And I'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness. And I'll just sort of brighten that up, just to sort of bring that out. Uh, and then I'll do another one over here, but maybe a different style, maybe like a kind of a small tree or something. Okay, and we'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness and brighten that one up. Okay, that looks pretty good. And uh, I'll zoom out here so we can see uh, what we've painted. So there we go, I think uh, this is done. I really like the way this turned out. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, if you have any questions about this, you can always send me an email directly. But uh, other than that, guys, thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.